G'day guys, Clint here from Lawn Hub and today we're at my house again and we're going to top dress my tiff tuff. Now for those of you that have followed the journey uh, you'll know that the lawn was put down in April which was Easter Friday and we rushed it and we didn't have enough loam underneath the lawn at the start uh, and it was always my plan to top dress it. Now over those months it's kind of come to a point that it's pretty good. Uh, a lot of people might look at it and go, what are you doing? You're crazy. Like, why would you throw sand down? It looks pretty good. But there are some high points and some low points. So today for that top dressing, I've got my ridiculously industrial quality lawn leveler, which uh, basically works like that to push sand around. Now, I'm only looking to put about 10 mil of sand on this lawn. So this might be too excessive, but it's here anyway. I think a lot of the work today might be a rake and a shovel. Um, so I've got a shovel. And I've got a wheelbarrow, I've got some string line and a screwdriver. So my plan with this is to stick the screwdriver in on one edge and then drag the string line across. So I've got a metal edge here and then I'll drag the string line across. And kind of sit it there and get a good indication of where we're looking. So at the moment, down the other end of that string line, I want to put a bit of sand there, but here I'm not, I'm not unhappy with that. Uh, my plan is to get it pretty close to the top of this, this edge here. Uh, the lawn long term is going to be mowed at probably 12 mil, uh, being a tiff tough uh, that I want to stripe up or actually want to get a nice grid pattern on it. I need a little bit of length on there, so um, I'll be aiming to be maybe 6 mil to 8 mil underneath that finished level. And I don't want to top dress too much today. I'm just going to dust the lawn regularly so that the leaf is still exposed so that it enables the lawn to continue growing. Obviously, if the leaf can't see the sun, the sun can't get in there and then you're basically just going to kill your lawn. So we saw a bit of that happen down here. This has actually come back quite good and I'm, I might get Duffy to cut in a screenshot now of the, the patch that was here. We had basically a sand pit created here for my kids. As a bit of a joke, but also a bit of top dressing, that sprinkler was quite high we've reduced the height of the sprinkler by lifting the level of the loam but if you have a look now if we go string line straight across the sprinkler is exactly where we wanted it right that can go straight over the top so a mower is going to go straight over the top uh, and it's come up quite a lot so if i don't go too thick i think we can do this in a couple of top dresses over the coming month with the plan that by Christmas day, COVID being cool, uh, we can have family and friends around here on a flat deck with diamonds. Because diamonds are a man's best friend. Or is it dogs? Anyway, so this is me gonna be working. It's 34 degrees Celsius in Adelaide today, uh, which is roasting to be wearing a black shirt and shoveling sand, but plenty of my clients do it every day and they don't complain, so. I can do it. Now, once it's all down, I'm going to apply some wet. I haven't put a liquid wetting agent down here at all, ever, and some more roots and shoots. Now, roots and shoots, I've said this before and I'll say it again, has become like, I don't know, a tonic uh, for lawns and gardens. We sell so much of this. Uh, I keep bringing it home. I use this more than anything else on the lawn and garden because it's not, it's, it's ultimately pretty natural. It's the majority of the products made up from kelp. Um, and you can apply it more regularly without causing, I guess, an overload of nutrients in the soil. Uh, and it just, it encourages root growth and I, to the point where I've got a watering can around all the time now with roots and shoots in it. And if I see my dog go to the toilet on the lawn, I'll put roots and shoots on that patch and we're getting a lot less, um, less burn. So if you have a look over here, this one's, it's in the worst spot now because of the shadowing. But this, I, I saw this yesterday and put roots and shoots on it and you can see all that growth coming through already. So while there's plenty of um, old wives tales and dog rock theories around uh, how to stop dog urine from burning your grass, ultimately you can try all of them and go raw diet, yogurt, dog rocks, um, pH neutral water or whatever people are coming up with. Uh, for me, it's too impractical for us to do that. So what I'm able to do is put roots and shoots down, or you can put any similar product down. Um, obviously roots and shoots is my chosen product because it's my chosen product. Uh, and it just, 
I don't know what it does. It just changes the, um, it feeds that plant and, and helps with it to grow and I'm not getting as much death. I mean, you look at the rest of the lawn, there's no patches. Luckily, my dog tends to only go in one spot, which is around the corner where I don't care about. This, I reckon this was a, a guest dog. Sometimes my wife lets guest dogs come around, so we might have to knock that on the head, not the dog. So I'm gonna get into it now. I've got some sand that's been brought in from Railways, which is a landscape supplies yard here in South Australia. The sand is actually called a lawn hub top dressing sand. It's a, a washed sand um, that we bring into Railways and we found that it's been one of the most cost effective top dressing sands. The sand that we had here last time was a play pit sand, which is a really quite a fine sand, but it's about twice the price. So our lawn hub top dressing sand is more cost effective. Uh, we'll see how it goes, I haven't used it before. Uh, and this is the great thing about me doing things like this is it gives me an opportunity to test products that we sell and use, so these products, as well as the sand and get an idea. Even this wheelbarrow, I stole this wheelbarrow as well. So, and this, we rent this out. So all of these things um, are things that I benefit from using and hopefully uh, you can get some kind of insight around tiff tough and top dressing from the video. If you've got any questions or comments, as always, please stick them in the comment section below. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, subscribed, please subscribe to the channel uh, so that you don't miss out on any future videos. I better get into it because it's 10 to 10 and it's about to get really hot here in Adelaide. So I'm going to go start bringing some barrows in and start filling that area in. I've ordered two and a half ton of sand. I've got a bad feeling I've ordered about one and a half ton too much, but luckily we've got the internet and I can give it away on the internet. The good thing about this sand is it's kind of irregular in size. It's not like little balls. So it's not going to bind together too much. The downside already I can see there's like, what's that, like a four mil little rock. So um, we'll see how it goes. I don't want it to be a problem for people with their cylinder mowers, but yeah, looks all right. So for those of you that have watched the channel before, you'll know that we moved some of my Tiff Tough cores up to this end because we were having a bit of a, a struggle with this growing. The lawn's only been down since April, which I mentioned before. It's now November and this area just doesn't get sunlight. Uh, this last couple of weeks in South Australia has probably been the only time we've had 30 degree days. Uh, we've had a really late start to spring, so I expect to have a late summer and I'm hoping to get some warmth into this soil. We've already seen a massive change in the way that uh, the leaves or the, the plants growing, the lawn's growing. So I think that it won't be long before this is all filled in. I'm a bit worried we're gonna have to cement a bit of it, but we'll see how it plays out. There's an area there that just gets no sun at all, but Tiff Tuff's pretty shade tolerant. I've seen it grow in some very shady areas. I just don't think it didn't get a chance to establish. So we'll put a bit of sand down here today. Max said it was fine for me to top dress this area, uh, just not to go too thick, make sure that we've still got some leaf sticking out. Uh, because obviously sand's a nice growing media for this lawn, so it'll spread out nicely and it'll also help me bring that area up a little bit. So there's somewhere we can stick that excess sand. It's actually quite hard to get this right. <laughs> Have a lot of respect for greenskeepers and um, turf management people. It's not an easy job. And it, <laughs> mate, I'm serious. It's an underappreciated job, but it's an underpaid job on golf courses and tennis courts and whatever else. And the first, you know, the first sign of the lawn not being perfect, they hop shit, but, and they can't say anything because they're all too polite and, you know, don't want to raise any trouble, but greenskeepers have one of the toughest jobs um, you look at something like Adelaide Oval, they'll have an event, um, not Adelaide Oval specifically, but you know, any major sporting area, people are nice and quick to criticise if it's not right. And it's, I think it's getting more and more common for the media to say something if it is good, but it hasn't always been like that. So, and an amateur like me spreading out sand will highlight how 
how much uh, skill it actually does take because I am shocking. That sand was quite wet. You can see the color difference. Shows how hot it is today. Doesn't feel like it. I mean, this isn't that hard to push out. I'm gonna give it a water in. I'm not sure if that's a thing. Um, I found that that last lot was a lot better watered in. Uh, I think for a couple of reasons. One, the kids couldn't get to it. Uh, but it also got through the canopy. So once it was through the canopy, it let, meant the lawn could get to the sun. I don't know if it gets any better than that, like kind of water it in and then just do Christmas carols, I don't know. So we tend to need a little bit more on that, on the edges, that's where all the irrigation trenches were. Uh, so I think even if the lawn had been prepared better and um, we had a bit more time, I think we'd still find that you'd need an element of top dressing just to get those trenches clean, clean, level, flat, whatever words you want to use. Now I don't want to put too much over there because that's going to uh, be a sprinkler repair area soon. For those of you that tune into the Water Pro YouTube channel, this is the second time that has happened. Uh, turns out sprinkler fittings don't handle Scott Bonner 20 inch unicorns like they used to. So uh, that's gonna be a job for another day. Which will give me an excuse to hand water this area for a while. So it's looking pretty good here. We're actually right up on the edge so it's more this way than that way. Now I found spreading out the sand with this shovel uh, works better first and then using the, the leveler to follow it up works well. Once I get the sand up to the right height, I'm gonna run over the sprinklers without breaking them, hopefully.
Yeah, too much then. So I'm going to put some uh, wet and some roots and shoots out now as a tank mix, which means I'm mixing it in the same tank to spray it out. Uh, people might be wondering why I'm going to put it out above. The wet product requires about 6 to 10 mil of irrigation, so uh, we'll put the R bands on it to get it in, and then that'll help the soil profile to take water. It's, this has really struggled since we put it in. Um, actually, I might be able to show you. So if you go like, you put water on the top of this lawn, it just sits on it and just doesn't disappear, like it is a little bit, since we got it cored. But yeah, see it's running, and so we get heaps of puddling down the end there. If you go down and have a look, you'll see there's a puddle at the end. So that's because all the irrigation comes down there. It's also because the sprinklers don't have check seals in them, which, see that there, I empty, I've emptied that water twice today. So it's still going down there, which there's two things. One, the lawn doesn't have a deep root zone, so the water's not getting into the ground. But two, I might be irrigating for too long. I don't think I am though. Uh, all right, now we'll get that leveler out of the way. I'll fill up the Solo 414, Australia's favorite backpack sprayer. So what we have here is Lawn Hub Wet, which is a wetting agent. Uh, on the instructions, it says to mix 250 to 500 mils of wet with a minimum of five to 10 liters per 100 square meters and apply it to your lawn. Now, my lawn's 160 square meters. So the best thing we could probably do is mix, usually I'll get the whole lawn done in one tank. And I think I just move fast or I don't know, but I think, uh, 10 litres in one of these, to get 160 square metres with one seems to be fast. Uh, do not apply when temperatures exceed 30 degrees Celsius. <laughs> uh, hey Google, what's the temperature at the moment in Adelaide? In Adelaide it's currently 30 degrees. Awkward. Well it doesn't exceed 30 degrees so we're doing it anyway. Now, uh, we can tank mix roots and shoots. So roots and shoots and wet in one tank on the lawn. Important to note, wet is a product that requires watering in. So I'm gonna have a full irrigation cycle off the back of this. Oh man, some of that lawn looks so high. <laughs> it's really bugging me. Uh, so 250 to 500 mils per 100 square meters. So uh, we can put 500 mils per 100 square meters is, we'll go 160. So we add 50% to that. So we could do 750 mils to my 150 square meters. The difference in the ratios comes down to how often you're applying it. So if you want to put down 500 mils per 100 square meters, you'd put it out less often. If you wanted to stick back with your 250, you'd put it out more regularly. It really depends how much time you want to spend caring for your lawn. So. Um, I will put out a lot of it because I really want to get it in and I'll have to make sure I really water it in. I, I laugh a little bit about the 30 degrees Celsius thing, but it's really important. If you put wet down and don't water it in, it will burn your lawn. If you put wet down and don't water it in properly, it will burn your lawn. If you put too much wet down, it will burn your lawn. Please hold. Yo, sorry about that. Uh, the perils of running a business while fertilizing your lawn. Um, just sitting at this level, I'm looking at it and it's like, it almost looks like a wave. Anyway, yeah. 
Uh, so I'm going to put down a decent amount of wet. Uh, it does say, what does it say? 5 to 10 mils per 100 square meters. Sorry, 5 to 10 liters. So what it's trying to do is get you to put as much water down with it so you're not putting too much down. So I don't know how we're going to do this. What I might do is a, um, an application with 500 mils in 10 liters. And then uh, I can always do another quick over the top. So I'll just grab some gloves. I think I'm an extra large, but I think they all say that. So you can either use the uh, friendly measuring thing here, or you can use a measuring jug of some variety. I don't have a measuring jug of some variety. Well, I do, but my wife's uh, not as keen and supportive as she used to be about me using her cookware for fertilizing. Wow, this is super viscous. I haven't used wet before. It's so thick. All right, so that's 100. That is pretty thick, isn't it? Yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> it's a wetting agent. Um, I guess they're all viscous. 200. <laughs> So make sure that you're using a spray pack that doesn't have any existing chemicals in it, such as glyphosate. Uh, I'm using a Solo 414. One of the most common questions we see, is that three? One of the most common questions we see on all of the forums and the Facebook groups is, What's the best backpack sprayer I can buy for blah, 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 blah. Now, obviously the best backpack sprayer or the best sprayer you can buy is the one that you can afford. Um, if you don't have any budget constraints, I highly encourage you to look at the Solo range. You don't need to buy it from Waterpro, you can railways, you can buy it, or you don't have to buy it from Lawn Hub, you can buy it from whoever sells it, I don't really care. Um, I do care, but I'd prefer that you support us. We do a lot and we're pretty competitive. Come on! Uh, my forearms are gonna feel that tomorrow. So in hindsight, I probably would have used a measuring jug for that one. Um, yeah, so if you can get, if, if money's not an object, and they're not that expensive, they're $200. We regularly have them for 180 if you get a discount code. Uh, so, roots and shoots. Uh, 60 to 100 mils per 10 litres, so 100 mils per 10 litres. Now, if you overdo, overdo roots and shoots, don't get too concerned. Um, it's not a product that is that strong, so uh, you're not going to burn anything. I know guys using five times the recommended dose on this. In saying that, I do not recommend you going off label and also uh, any other fertilizer product that we sell, if you do overdo it, you're gonna damage your lawn. Now, the next step is to put some water in your spray unit. Now, you wanna make sure that you're putting your water in not too crazily, because you're gonna get splashing. So you want it to go in slowly, but you wanna be able to agitate the the products and get it all mixed up and then get mixing straight up uh, get spraying straight away so the great thing about this sprayer is as soon as it's full it's good to go now i made some videos the other day where i said to leave this off when priming i got a heap of messages from people saying there's heaps of different ways to prime these things uh i'll show you a few of them one of them said there was a button on the side you could press or remove. I think it might be that. Turn that. But uh, Shane Benton from Bento Boxes R Us. Shout out to Shane. Massive supporter of Lawn Hub. He said you can. I'll show you. So at the moment, oh, come on. 
Basic Threads with Clint Adams. So that's on now, and I hope this doesn't make an idiot of me, but it won't be the first thing that it does. So I've turned it on at the side there, pumps on. Now you press, press that and it's not coming out. It's struggling. So Shane said, if you crack that there, it will prime, but then it goes. There you go. Now, I probably cracked it more than I needed to. Um, I'm gonna stick with my method because I got shit on my hands. Um, I'm wearing gloves to protect myself, so that's all good. But um, yeah, anyway, that's primed and ready to go. So now I'm gonna apply this as evenly as possible to the lawn and then we're gonna water it in and I'm going for a swim. So I've done this a fair few times over the last couple of months with different products, mainly roots and shoots. So I've got a pretty good sense for how much area I can cover and which where to go. Having sand on the lawn is really helping. I can see what, exactly what I've sprayed. Funny, you also get a sense for how much you've got left in your back in your backpack. You kind of feel, feel it getting lighter. So I've just dropped this off the shoulder to get all the liquid into the pump. It actually drops off onto that right shoulder really easily. I'm just gonna apply a bit more down here. This is an area where it's not getting or where it's getting um, all the water ends up. So I don't know if that's the right idea, but usually if I've got roots and shoots left, I'll just put it straight on the garden. I don't want to spray a wetting agent straight onto the leaf of the plant. So remembering we've only put 500 mil of wetting agent out over 150 square meters, so it's quite a light dose. So going back over it, like this is not gonna do any harm. I underestimated my uh, ability to work out how many uh, square meters I could get done in a tank. Walking too fast today. All right, there we go, she's done. So, turn it off. So we've got uh, a Rainbird automatic irrigation controller over here. You probably don't want to stand on the lawn for this champ. So I want to get that water on straight away. Looks darker already out there, eh? Okay. So I'm going to do, there's two stations for 10 minutes. One and two, and start them. Now station three has been turned off because it's broken, so that won't turn on. And then I'm gonna go water the other bit over the other side by hand, uh, because I ran over the sprinklers. So the sprinklers that you're watching here are Rainbird 
R vans, which are pretty cool. I think the one in the middle, oh no, that's an R van. Um, they put out about 14 mil per hour. Now, we want to get 10 mil on here. I think six is enough, but 10 is what we recommend. So obviously I need to reverse engineer that and get 45 minutes worth of watering off of each valve. Now, these here for 45 minutes will put water all down the end. So I'm gonna do a 10 minute here, 10 minute there, then give it a break, then 10 minute here, 10 minute there, give it a break. Uh, catch up on some um, COVID, up, COVID, COVID? COVID updates from Stephen Marshall, our Premier. Hey Steve. And then hand water that one in the gaps. <laughs> we do we need to do that he, we should have probably got him in the gap but um so there's not much more we can do now that's it uh that's my lawn amateurishly top dressed and amateurishly fertilized and wedding agented uh we'll keep you posted as to where it goes from here hopefully it looks good soon uh i still worry about that area and that area but um we might even end up having to bring max penetration over here to to do it properly because I am not good at this stuff. But most people uh, don't do this for a living that are our client base, so this will show you how, um, the, the kind of result you can get without any uh, skill or experience. But thanks for watching. If you got this far, I uh, really appreciate it. Uh, if you're enjoying the videos, make sure you subscribe. Anyway, thanks for watching. Keep it green. I'm Clint Adams and I'll see you soon.